Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant. To all the believers, including pastors and theology students, participating in the Shincheonji online seminar today, it is nice to meet you. I am Lee jung Su, your presider today. First of all, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to all who attended the Shincheonji online seminar today. Today's online seminar, Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant, is being broadcast globally in various languages. This seminar is a great opportunity to receive not only the prophecies of Revelation, which contain the conclusion of the entire Bible, all believers must know, but also the testimony on its fulfillment. I hope this will be a precious time for everyone who attends from all over the world to receive much grace and understanding. First, let us offer prayers before we begin the seminar. Let's offer prayer with a united heart. Holy Father God, to whom we give all thanks, we thank you for allowing us another day of precious life and being with us. Especially, we thank you for allowing us to hear the online seminar, Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant. The words of Revelation were sealed in seven seals in the right hand of God, so no one in heaven or on earth was able to open or look inside it. But now, you sent the promised shepherd in this era and allowed him to see and hear the events of all the chapters of Revelation and to eat the open scroll. You commanded him to testify to churches, so finally we are able to understand the prophecy and fulfillment, and this we confess. This word is being broadcast worldwide, so that everyone in the whole world can hear. So please grant eyes to see and ears to hear, and a mind that understands to everyone who listens. Please be with the Simon tribe leader who will testify the word today, and bestow him upon power upon power, so that he can testify the words of Revelation 9 clearly. We also sincerely ask that abundant blessings from heaven will be upon all pastors, theology students, and saints who are present in this place. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, who is loving and holy. Amen. This online seminar is being conducted with strict adherence to the COVID-19 guidelines and social distancing regulations. Now, this is the most precious time to listen to the word of life. This is not the first time that the Shincheonji Church held a seminar on Revelation. Since its establishment in 1984, Shincheonji Church has been holding Revelation Word Seminars touring the country. Especially in 2019, the Second Coming and the Harvest Seminar was held in major cities in Korea. Every time the Word of Revelation was proclaimed, many believers came to hear God's Word of Promise. This year, the chairman first testified to Revelation chapter 1 through online word seminar, and the tribe leaders, who have learned directly from the chairman, have testified up to Revelation chapter 8. Today, among the 12 tribes, Simon tribe leader Yi Seungju will clearly testify the words of Revelation chapter 9, verse by verse. Following Revelation chapter 8, Revelation 9 records how the chosen people are sacrificed after they were judged and were thrown outside to the Gentiles due to their betrayal like Adam in Revelation chapter 6. Through the word today, I pray that we can understand who receives judgment and why they receive judgment. I pray that this will be a time you can keep the testimony of Revelation word by word in your hearts and perceive. Now, we welcome the Simon tribe leader, Yi Seungju, who will testify the word today. Please give him a big round of applause. Pastors and members from around the world who wish for heaven and eternal life, I sincerely welcome and thank you for attending the Shincheonji Online Revelation Seminar today. 
I am Sung Ju Li, the tribe leader of the Simon tribe, who was appointed in the name of Simon, the disciple of Jesus. Today's reference is Revelation 9, the testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation, God's new covenant. In the time of fulfillment of the book of Revelation, there are events in which the trumpets are sounded. Do you know how many trumpets are sounded? As you learned the words of Revelation 8 through the tribe leader Andrew last time, seven trumpets are sounded in the end times. Four trumpets are sounded in Revelation 8, and two trumpets are sounded in Revelation 9. The last trumpet is sounded in Revelation 11, verse 15. However, the sound of these seven trumpets are not all the same. The sound of the first trumpet to the sixth trumpet announces that God's chosen people are sacrificed. But the seventh trumpet is different. It's the opposite. It is the sound of the trumpet of salvation to announce that the enemy Babylon will be destroyed and God's chosen people will be saved. It is the sound of the trumpet of salvation in which the kingdom of the world becomes the kingdom of God. Because this seventh trumpet is so important, you should learn it well when you study Revelation chapters 10 and 11. Today, we are going to look at the words of Revelation chapter 9. First, those who blow the trumpets are seven angels. The trumpet that the angel blows is not the sound of a physical trumpet like bum ba bum but the trumpet represents a flesh who speaks on behalf to inform that the chosen people who betrayed are sacrificed. It says in Isaiah 58, 1, Shout it aloud, do not hold back, raise your voice like a trumpet, declare to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Isaiah became the trumpet of God and preached the word of God. Today, according to the words of Revelation chapters 3 and 6, the saints who are called out with the seed of faith play the role of trumpets. It is prophesied that the angels will blow the trumpets, but the trumpet is not a physical trumpet. It refers to a flesh whom the angel is with, and the word of testimony declared through this worker becomes a trumpet sound. Next, what is the content of this trumpet sound? In Revelation chapter 6, the chosen people who betrayed get judged and thrown out. As they get driven out, they become part of the Gentiles. These chosen people who betrayed and who become part of the Gentiles get sacrificed by these Gentiles. So the sound of the trumpet makes known how the spirits of the chosen people are killed one-third at a time. Why is the trumpet blowing like this? The reason is to make them repent by letting them know that their spirit is being killed by the Gentile destroyers because of their sins and transgressions caused by their rebellion. When will these trumpets be sounded? The trumpets are sounded after the chosen people are judged for their rebellion and are thrown into the Gentiles and come to belong to them in Revelation 6. The trumpets are blown after the events of Revelation chapter 6. If so, where will the trumpets be blown? Where is the location of the upcoming event? The location where the trumpets are blown is the tabernacle of the seven stars and the seven golden lampstands. This is the same place where people get judged for their rebellion and become part of the Gentiles in Revelation 6. This is where the event will take place. This tabernacle of the chosen people is the tabernacle that prepares the way where the messengers who prepare the way for the Lord's second coming are. It is like the tabernacle of John the Baptist, the messenger who prepared the way at the first coming. This tabernacle is said to be a mystery of God in Revelation 1. It was a tabernacle that no one knew about. As this tabernacle appears, it marks the beginning of the events of the book of Revelation. 
Although it is the tabernacle of God's chosen people, if they betray, they get judged and are cast out, as in Revelation 6, and become part of the Gentiles. This is why in chapters 8 and 9, the trumpets are blown to indicate that they are being sacrificed by these Gentile destroyers. Therefore, I hope we clearly understand that the events in chapters 8 and 9 are not global events, but they take place in the tabernacle of the seven stars and the seven golden lampstands who betrayed and become part of the Gentiles. Let us go to the content of chapter 9. If you take a look at the title first, it is labeled as the locust from the abyss and the angels who sin. The title itself is unique. It's very difficult. What is the abyss and what are the locusts? Who are the angels who sin? What do they do? These are what we will understand today. Revelation 9 describes the plagues of the fifth and sixth trumpets. From verses 1 to 11, it describes the plague of the fifth angel's trumpet. As the trumpet is sounded, a star falls from the sky. This star receives the key to the abyss and opens the abyss, and locusts come out. These locusts torture people who do not have the seal. There will also be tribulation when people get afflicted for five months, and it also portrays the appearance of these locusts. The plague of the fifth trumpet Let's start by reading verses 1 to 6 together. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it, like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. And out of the smoke locusts came down upon the earth, and were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were not given power to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. And the agony they suffered was like that of the sting of a scorpion when it strikes a man. During those days, men will seek death but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. I drew the words from this content with a picture. The fifth angel sounded his trumpet, and a star fell from the sky and received the key to the abyss. When he opens the abyss with this key, Smoke rises from it. The sun and sky darkened because of this smoke. Locusts come up from this smoke. Strangely enough, they were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but torture only those people who did not have the seal of God for five months. This agony is too hard for men, so they will seek death, but death will elude them. The fifth trumpet is blown to announce this incident. If you look at this literally, something really strange happens. How can a star receive the key to the abyss? Locusts are originally supposed to eat and harm grass or trees, but they are told not to harm them and only torment those who do not have the seal of God. How many people in this world are not sealed with God's seal? In Job 33, it explains how God opens the ears of men and seals God's instruction. According to a verse in New King James, the word of God is the seal of God. Those who do not have the seal of God are those who do not receive the word of God. There are so many of them in this world who do not receive it. So if you look at this literally, something really strange happens. I want you to know that prophecy was written in parables and sealed with parables. The person who saw and recorded the events of this chapter in a vision was Apostle John about 2,000 years ago. Today, the person who saw the actual reality of the fulfillment of the prophecies of this chapter at the scene of the event is the new John. The new John can testify to all the prophecies of Revelation and the actual reality that has been fulfilled according to the prophecies. 
Today, we will look at the meaning of the prophecy in Revelation 9 together with the words of its actual reality. First, what is the star that fell from the sky? The sky is figuratively used to indicate the tabernacle heaven where God and Jesus are together. This tabernacle refers to the tabernacle of seven golden lampstands, led by the seven messengers preparing the way for the second coming. In Genesis 37, the tabernacle of God's chosen people is called heaven, and the chosen people of Israel are figuratively compared to the sun, moon, and stars in the sky. And the star that fell from the sky represents a person who is from the tabernacle temple, but betrayed by forming a sect and becoming one with the destroyers. Who would this be? The truth about that person is Mr. Serpent, who came from the tabernacle temple and became one with the destroyers. This Mr. Serpent is the actual reality of the star that fell from the sky. In Revelation chapter 2, he's referred to as Nicholas. Then what is the key to the abyss that this Mr. Serpent received? First, the abyss refers to hell, Satan's dwelling place. On a broader scale, it also refers to the destroyers, those whom Satan has made his dwelling place. They and their activity headquarters organization become the abyss. If you go to Revelation 20 and read it, the dragon is called the ancient serpent, the devil, and Satan. Satan, the devil, is imprisoned in the abyss for a thousand years. After a thousand years, it will be released for a short time. It will be released from hell. So the abyss is hell. Revelation 18 tells us that the dwelling place of demons is called Babylon. This Babylon with whom demons, Satan, the devil, and unclean spirits are, is also described as hell. That is why this place, Babylon, the headquarters of the destroyer's activities, where Satan and the devil are together, becomes the abyss. The actual reality of this abyss is the stewardship education center, where Satan and the devil are together. The word steward refers to a shepherd or pastor. This organization was an institution that taught pastors, not lay believers or seminary students, who need to think about how great their authority must have been. At the first coming, Satan the devil destroyed all Judaism through the teachings of the law and Pharisees. In the same way today, Satan the devil used Gentile pastors from the Stewardship Education Center and destroyed the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands, which was the tabernacle preparing the way. The abyss at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation is the Stewardship Education Center, where Satan is together. What is the key to this abyss? The key symbolizes wisdom. The key to the abyss is the wisdom that allows the spirits of the devil as well as the messengers of hell from the Stewardship Education Center, the headquarters of the activities of the destroyers, to come out of and enter the abyss, hell. To put this simply, in reality, the seven Gentile pastors from the Stewardship Education Center, which is the abyss, are the messengers of hell. Wisdom to bring them out and lead them to the tabernacle temple is the key to the abyss. It was the wisdom Mr. Serpent had when he went to the Stewardship Education Center and brought the seven Gentile pastors to lead them to the tabernacle temple. Next, what is the smoke rising from the abyss? This smoke in Revelation 8 referred to the sound of prayer lifted up before God. The smoke of the abyss is false doctrines that come out of the mouths of the false pastors from the Stewardship Education Center, the abyss. The cries from the crowds of Satan who are shouting this false doctrine are portrayed as smoke. Its actual reality is the doctrine and teachings of the destroyers from the Stewardship Education Center. The sun and air and the sky are darkened by the doctrines and teachings of these destroyers. 
As we learn in verse 1, the sun reverse refers to the pastors of the seven golden lampstands, the tabernacle of God's chosen people. The air refers to the perception, heart, and spirit of the saints. This is the event of darkening the perception, heart, and spirit of the pastors and saints of the tabernacle that betrayed. From a spiritual point of view, this is the same event from the time of the first coming when the hearts and spirits of the pastors and saints of Israel were darkened by false doctrines and teachings from the teachers of the law and Pharisees. The devil devoured Jerusalem and those were the people whom the devil was with. What are these locusts coming out of the smoke? These locusts are the Gentile destroyers who swallowed up the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands that Jesus walked among. Locusts roam in swarms, devouring random plants with their ferocious appetites. In Joel chapter 1, God's chosen people are compared to fig trees and vines, and the Gentile destroyers are described as locusts. The image of the Gentile destroyers coming and destroying the chosen people who betrayed is expressed as the form of locusts gnawing and destroying fig trees and vines. These people are expressed as the Nicolaitans who invade and destroy the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands, which was the tabernacle preparing the way in Revelation 2. The actual reality of these destroying locusts is the seven Gentile pastors in the Stewardship Education Center. The fact that the locusts came down upon the earth out of the smoke of the abyss means these destroyers came into the tabernacle temple that betrayed. From the Stewardship Education Center, the home of their activities, shouting false doctrines. The authority of these locusts received was like that of a scorpion. Scorpions have this stinging stinger. The authority of these destroyers means their teaching authority to kill people's spirits with Satan's doctrine. Like the sting of a scorpion, under that condition, they were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads and torture them for five months. The tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands was a place where the seven messengers of the seven stars worked and where God and Jesus walked. If this tabernacle is called heaven, then the rest of the world could be called the earth. In other words, except for the tabernacle that betrayed, the rest of the world is referred to as the earth. And all the denominations and members in this world are referred to as grass of the earth, plants and trees. In Isaiah 40 and Isaiah 5, people are compared to grass and trees. Do not harm them. The reason they were told not to harm is because the judgment on the tabernacle temple that betrayed has not yet been finished. They were told only to harm these who did not have the seal of God. If you go to Ezekiel 9 and read it, those who are not sealed by God are stricken and judged. It says the judgment will start with the temple of God. First, the seal of God is the word of God. In the book of John, chapter 3, it says that those who hear the word of God's testimony certify God is truthful and get sealed through this. The person who receives the word of God's testimony is a person who is sealed, but those who are not sealed have not received the word of God's testimony. So those who do not have the word are the ones who are not sealed. Who are the actual realities of these people? They are not people all over the world who do not receive the word of God, but the actual realities are the saints who betrayed from the tabernacle temple that betrayed. Because they betrayed the word of God, they forsook the word of God. This is not an event that takes place to all believers in the world. 
but an event that happens to the chosen people who betrayed in the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands, who were judged for their rebellion and were thrown outside to the Gentiles in Revelation chapter 6. This is why believers in the world and all the church members did not know about this event. Even though the events of these trumpets in Revelation 9 were all fulfilled, however, we are able to receive this testimony once new John sees and hears the actual reality of these events in the location of the event called the Tabernacle Temple and testifies. When you receive this kind of testimony as evidence, I believe you must know that the events of Revelation 9 must have been fulfilled on this earth. Next, what does it mean to torture for five months? Five months remind us of the days of Noah, right? All living things died as the water flooded for 150 days in five months. In this way, after being tortured for five months, it is promised that the spirits of everyone in this temple that betrayed will die after the five months. This is the message that tells us that the coming of the Son of Man and the time of the second coming will be like the days of Noah. Spiritually, it is the same as in the days of Noah. The destroying Gentile pastors entered the tabernacle temple, despised, cursed, and demolished this tabernacle temple, took all the teaching authority, and made the saints who betrayed into their own congregation members of the Gentile denomination. This situation caused them pain in their heart. Didn't God entrust Job to Satan? Job had tremendous suffering while his life was not taken away. Like this suffering, it was a very painful event that came from the process of becoming Gentiles following the Gentile destroyers. The chosen people in the tabernacle that betrayed asked for death, but they were unable to die. It was an agonizing event. The fifth trumpet sound indicates this event. Next comes the appearance of these destroyers, the locusts. We will briefly look at this. Let's read verses 7 to 11. The locusts looked like horses prepared for battle. On their heads, they were something like crowns of gold, and their faces resembled human faces. Their hair was like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle. They had tails and stings like scorpions, and in their tails they had power to torment people for five months. They had as king over them the angel of the abyss, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, and in Greek Apollyon. Let's take a very brief look at the appearance of these locusts. Locusts are the destroyers, false pastors, who entered the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands that betrayed. Whenever you hear the word locusts, you can think of the destroyers, false pastors, and I believe it will make it easier to understand. First of all, the reason the locusts look like horses prepared for battle is to show that they are flesh used by Satan, like horses prepared for spiritual warfare. It is to make known how Satan is using and working through these locusts, the false pastors. Also, wearing something like crowns of gold indicates a noble position given by Satan. The reality of the locusts is the seven pastors of the Stewardship Education Center. Thus, the golden crowns of the locusts are the positions the seven pastors have, such as director, manager, positions like these. The fact that their faces are like human faces tells us that they are acting as chosen people, although they are the destroyers that Satan, who is less than a beast, has entered and works through. The locusts are false pastors and destroyers, but they are acting as if they were the chosen people claiming they are God's pastors, true pastors, and true orthodoxy, and that they have received the Holy Spirit. Next, having hair that was like woman's hair indicates that this locust is a spiritual woman, which means a pastor. 
And there are many members who are with the pastor. Many members who follow the pastor are figuratively likened unto the hair like women's hair. The fact that they have lion's teeth means that they have false doctrines and teachings that swallow saints like sheep. Having breastplates like iron breastplates means they are armed with their own teachings, so true teachings cannot penetrate their heart. I believe it will be easy to understand if you consider what Ephesians 6 says, that the full armor of God is the word of God and faith. Locusts having wings means that there are people who help the locusts, the false pastors or destroyers. Because there are those who help, they can work with their wings. Having tails like scorpions, Isaiah 9 says that the tail is a false prophet. This means that tails like false pastors are attached to the locusts. The false pastors, the destroyers. The stinger is the sting of their doctrine that kills a person's spirit. It means besides false prophets and false pastors, there are other false prophets with the doctrine that kills people, and they are attached to the destroyers who are like locusts. The locusts have more than tails. The locusts also have a king. As the locusts are false prophets, destroyers, the king refers to the head pastor. The head pastor, commanding all false pastors, is referred to as a king. Who is this pastor? Speaking of the fulfillment of the king-like pastor, the, rea the actual reality of the locusts are the seven pastors of the Stewardship Education Center. So the king is Mr. Earth. Mr. Earth is the king of the locusts. Up to now, we have learned the word of the prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation chapter 9. Now we will summarize the content. The events of chapter 9 are not events that take place throughout the entire world, but events that occurred at the tabernacle of the golden lampstands that betrayed. In Revelation chapter 6, they were judged, then became a den of Gentiles. The star that fell from the sky here is Mr. Serpent, who is from the tabernacle, who is from the tabernacle temple, but became one with the destroyers. The abyss refers to the base camp of the destroyers, the stewardship education center, and the locusts there refer to the seven false pastors. Who would be the highest? It is the king of the locusts. The key to the abyss is the wisdom that allows Mr. Serpent to go to the Stewardship Education Center and bring in the false pastors like locusts. Through that wisdom, the serpent brings the false pastors like locusts. When they enter, they come in shouting the false doctrines and church laws of the Stewardship Education Center like smoke from the abyss. Therefore, the spirits of the pastors and the saints of the tabernacle temple were darkened. Who are they tormenting in the tabernacle? The event of tormenting those who have not received God's seal for five months occurred. The suffering is the pain that comes from the process of the destroyers making the members of the tabernacle temple who betrayed into the Gentile believers who belong to them. In this way, we have examined the prophecies and the fulfillment of Revelation chapter 9 together. All the prophecies of the Old Testament were fulfilled with the actual realities at the first coming, and only Jesus testified about the actual realities that were fulfilled. In the same way, when the New Testament prophecies, the book of Revelation today, at its due time is all fulfilled, the fulfilled realities can only be testified by new John, who saw and heard at the scene of the events. Prophecy does not have actual realities, but the fulfillment has actual realities. What should we believe in with our faith?
Aren't we supposed to know and believe in the actual realities the, the prophecies have been fulfilled? Not just the prophecy, this is an actual reality, of Revelation chapter 9. When all the chapters of the prophecy and fulfillment have been testified, I hope that all of us listen to the testimony and with the words of the prophecies confirm the actual realities that have been fulfilled as prophesied, understand and believe as God's children. Next, let's take a look at the sixth trumpet. The plague of the sixth trumpet is recorded in verses 12 to 21. When the sixth trumpet is sounded, the four angels bound at the river Euphrates appear. They are angels who sinned. They were kept ready to kill another third of the people at the very hour and day and month. Also, the spirits and flesh that belonged to these four bound angels became the mounted troops. These mounted troops are unique and that their tails have a head. There is an event of fire, smoke, and sulfur coming out of these horses' mouths, killing a third of people. It is promised that even when this kind of event is made known, the chosen people who betrayed will not repent. Let us read the words from verse 12 to 16 first. The first woe is past. Two other wolves are yet to come. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet, and I heard a voice coming from the horns of the golden altar that is before God. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates, and the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of the mountain troops was 200 million. I heard their number. I have made a drawing of these contents. When the sixth angel blew his trumpet, the four angels bound by the great river Euphrates were released. They were ready to kill a third of the people at the very hour, day, month, and year. If we understand these words literally, wouldn't it be a terrifying event? There are about 7.6 billion people in the global village. Wouldn't killing a third of them be an event of killing more than 2.5 billion people? Because this has been prophesied at the time of fulfillment, at the very year, month, day, and hour, an event like this must happen. So we will learn the meaning of the prophecy and its actual reality. First, who are the four angels bound at the great river Euphrates? Considering that these angels were bound, these angels are referring to the angels who sinned. Jude 1 and 2 Peter 2 tell us that these sinful angels were imprisoned until the time of judgment of the great day. This is when they are set free to make an action. Immediately after the sixth angel blows the trumpet, they are released and do the work of killing the chosen people who betrayed and judging. Next, where is the great river Euphrates, where the four bound angels are? This refers to hell, where four bound angels are. That means the place where four angels are bound is equal to hell. The Euphrates River is one of the four rivers flowing from the Garden of Eden in the book of Genesis. Why was this hell compared to the river Euphrates? It is because the events of the Revelation chapter 9 are spiritually similar to the time of Adam. So it has been phrased this way. Next, is the date when the angels who sinned were ready to kill a third of the people. When is the year, month, day, and hour? And who are the people being killed? If this plague were to fall on everyone in the world, it would be truly dreadful and very concerning. Fortunately, however, this prophecy is not a, world a worldwide event but the event that occurred at the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands that betrayed in Revelation 6, received judgment, and became part of the Gentiles. The four angels who sinned, the evil spirits using the false pastors, at the very hour, day, month, and year, 
killed the spirits of a third of the chosen people of the tabernacle of the golden lampstands who betrayed. It is the day of the plague and the destruction. We will learn about this in great detail in Revelation chapter 13. It is an event of killing all their spirits by putting the mark of the beast, 666, on the forehead and right hand of the chosen people who betrayed. We will learn more about this event in Revelation chapter 13, but I will tell you the actual date of its fulfillment. This event took place on September 20th, 1981, at 2 p.m. Before the prophecies of the book of Revelation were fulfilled, people might say that this event would be like this. That date would be this date or that date. Testifying like this without witnessing is men's teaching. For the prophecies of the book of Revelation, the true actual reality is what is testified by the witness who has seen and heard at the scene of the event of the fulfillment. The person who has seen and heard all the chapters of the prophecies and fulfillment of the revelation is New John, based on Revelation chapter 22, the messenger of Jesus. The New John, when Jesus fulfills all the prophecies of the book of Revelation at the place of fulfillment, witnesses all the fulfilled realities and testifies. When, where, and through whom did these events take place? As he sees and then testifies, his evidence becomes the evidence of the true reality. So when you learn Revelation chapter 13, I hope that you will learn all the characters and events of the event one by one and perceive well. Next, the mounted troops of 200 million appear. What are their actual realities? The mounted troops have horses and chariots. The horses in the Bible refer to flesh, and the rider refers to the spirit. This is a person working riding on a horse. The spirit does the work of the spirit using the flesh. So the mounted troops of 200 million signify the flesh and spirits belonging to the four angels who have sinned. The reason they were called mounted troops is because they form an army-like organization. Just as in Revelation chapter 5, the number of innumerable angels is recorded as thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. 200 million is telling us that the evil spirits and flesh belonging to Satan are countless. God's army is composed of thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000 angels and their people centered on the four archangels. But Satan's army was composed of the four angels who sinned and 200 million evil spirits and flesh belonging to them. Satan, the devil, always imitates the world of God and creates it on his own. Their war will continue and will come to an end when Revelation chapter 20 is fulfilled. Next, the spirit and the flesh of the mounted troops does the work of killing the spirit of people. Then how do they operate? Let us read verses 17 to 19. The horses and riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue, and yellow as sulfur. The heads of the horses resembled the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. A third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. The power of the horses was in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails were like snakes, having heads with which they inflict injury. I also drew a picture of this word. It is the event when the sixth trumpet is sounded. A third of people are killed with the fire and smoke and sulfur coming out of the mouths of horses. When we hold a pen and draw a picture on paper, paper strange horses are drawn. It has a tail like a snake and a head in its tail and fire and smoke and sulfur coming out of its mouth. 
Have you ever seen this kind of horse? These are very bizarre horses and very strange horses. So I believe that you must know that the words of the book of Revelation were recorded in parables. Let us look at the words of this prophecy in fulfillment together. First of all, the horses and riders are the mounted troops of 200 million. The spirits and flesh that belong to Satan. They are the 200 million evil spirits belonging to the four angels who sin and the flesh belonging to them. What is the breastplate of fiery red, dark blue, and yellow with sulfur that they wear? In Revelation chapter 12, there is a red dragon. The red dragon, Satan, the devil, gives the false doctrines in all colors. That is their, bless, their breastplate. It is also said that the heads of horses are like that of lions. This word tells us that the flesh used by the evil spirits are false pastors, and they are the destroyers devouring the sheep like believers. What is the fire and smoke and sulfur coming out of their mouths? In Jeremiah 5, the word of God, the word of judgment, is compared to fire. In this way, the fire coming out of the mouth of the false pastor who is with Satan, the devil, is Satan's doctrine. Whether it is described as fire or smoke, it is a false teaching of Satan, the devil, as it burns spirits and kills the spirits. This is the meaning of fire, smoke, and sulfur. Also, in what kind of event are a third of people killed by fire, smoke, and sulfur. These destroyers testify false doctrines by prophesying the words of the demons that have dominion over them. So it will be an event that kills the spirits of a third of the saints in the tabernacle temple who betrayed with false doctrines, with the doctrines of Satan and the devil. It is an event that kills spirit not the body. So you should know that the incident of the sixth trumpet in Revelation 9 is not an event that takes place all over the world, but I believe is an event that takes place in the tabernacle temple, the place of the golden lampstands who betrayed, received judgment, and became one with the Gentiles as seen in Revelation 6. It is an incident where these destructive false pastors killed one-third of the spirits of the chosen people who betrayed in the tabernacle temple that betrayed. Next, these horses have tails, right? In Isaiah 9.15, the tail is said to be a false prophet. The false prophet of the horsemen had a false prophet, like a tail, attached to the destroyer. The reality of this tale is 17 evangelists from the tabernacle temple who became Gentile pastors with just one laying on of hands. Destroyers, Gentile destroyers, placed their hands on them and they became pastors of the Gentiles. There are evangelists from the tabernacle temple who became pastors. These became their tails, and those who laid hands on them became the heads. That's why I express that there is a head. So that's why it is expressed that there is a head on the tail. The fact that there is a head in a tail means that there is a pastor who is the head of the false prophets, like the tail, because the head is a head pastor. Those who are ordained become the head pastors. Those who are ordained become Gentile pastors in the tails. So the head of this tail is the head of the seven pastors of the Stewardship Education Center who carries out the ordination. And the evangelists from the Tabernacle Temple who are ordained by them become the tail. The head and the evangelists will be the tail. I've looked at all the words of this case together, but let's summarize it. The location of the event where the sixth trumpet is sounded is not a global event. The location is the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands who prepared the way, but then betrayed. It is like the temple of John the Baptist who prepared the way at the time of the first coming. 
This tabernacle of the seven stars who betrayed, the seven golden lampstands, the tabernacle that was judged in Revelation 6, they all came to belong to the Gentiles. It's an incident where the chosen people who betrayed are killed and cease as they become one with the Gentiles. The mounted troops that appeared here are the tens of thousands of evil spirits with the four angels who have sinned and all the flesh that belong to them. They are the army of spirits and horses. The evangelists from the tabernacle temple who were ordained by the seven pastors of this stewardship education center become false prophets like the tail. And those who ordained them become the heads. These are the heads of the horses. The description of lions is expressing that they are destroyers. The fire and smoke and sulfur that come out of their mouths is the doctrine given by Satan. This is a commentary on false doctrine. The event that tells the story of the death of one-third of the spirits of the chosen people who betrayed becomes the event of the sixth trumpet. At that time, no one knew what happened when the sixth trumpet was sounded. But now, the event in which the sixth trumpet of Revelation 9 is sounded took place at this time and this place. And the new John, the pastor, the witness who saw and heard at the scene, saw everything and is now testifying. So if the twelve tribes are testifying to the prophecies and reality of Revelation 9 through New John and centering on the New John, listen carefully to the words of this testimony and the meaning of each word of prophecy. The reality that is fulfilled according to these words is really true. I hope that you will become those who believe in the reality of the fulfillment of the prophecies of Revelation and keep the new covenant by checking whether it is true or not. If anything is incorrect, please feel free to contact us. That brings us to the last verse, right? Let's read verses 20 and 21. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshipping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone and wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk. Nor did they repent of their murderers, their magic arts, their sexual immorality or their thefts. The trumpet was blown to inform the chosen people who had betrayed that a third of their spirits were being killed by the false doctrine of the Gentiles but they did not realize and did not repent. This tabernacle temple, the temple of the seven golden lampstands preparing the way of the Lord, is occupied by the beast of destruction and in a state where the spirits of almost all the saints have been slain by the plagues of the seven seals and the six trumpets. Among these, there are those who had not yet died in spirit, but they do not repent, but rather worship the various demons that have their dominion over them and worship idols. These various demons are filthy demons that make their dwelling for the destroyer. What are the evil spirits who control them and the idols? As you can see in Habakkuk 2.18, carved idols or images teach lies. Teachers who teach lies, false pastors, they are the destroyers, the seven pastors of the Stewardship Education Center and the false pastors who became pastors of the Gentiles, such as Mr. Snake, who was united with the destroyers, and the false pastors, ordained by them are idols, false teachers, and destroyers. To worship demons and idols means to serve and worship evil spirits while serving the destroyers, that is, false pastors. As God's chosen people, isn't it too much? Their actions are murder, magic arts, sexual immorality, and theft. Murder is the act of becoming one with the destroyers, hating each other and surrendering each other over to death. Magic arts is soliciting bribes and gifts while prophesying lies. 
It was really corrupt. Sexual immorality is not having fellowship with the bridegroom of Jesus, but having fellowship with Satan, the devil, and becoming one with Satan, the devil. Receiving the doctrine of Satan, the devil, is spiritual immorality. Theft is accomplice in the destroyer stealing God's things. When the destroyers rob the saints of God and all that is God's, it's stealing to become one with the destroyer and to do the same. Because they receive these consecutive plagues, the plague of the seven seals and the plague of the six trumpets in Revelation chapters 6 through 9, the saints in this tabernacle temple are said to be alive, but they are no different from those who have already died. The appearance of this tabernacle temple, which has been corrupted after entering the denomination of the Gentiles, is the same as in Isaiah 1, 21 and below. The silver becomes dross, and the wine is mixed with water. Also, these are just like killers. There's like a place full of fairness and loyalty. But now there are only murderers. It means there was murder, right? Also, doesn't it say that your princes partner with thieves and steal? They love bribes and ask for gifts? Those who have departed from the Spirit of God are spiritually blind and do not understand even after receiving disasters. These are the spiritually deaf. If you look at their deeds, you will be able to fully understand God's heart to punish those who have clung to the Gentiles, even if they were God's chosen people from among many nations. We earnestly hope that we will become the people of the kingdom of heaven who listen to the prophecies and the actual fulfillment of this revelation with earnest hearts. Check and confirm whether these words are true. Understand the prophecies and the fulfillment. Believe with our hearts and keep the new covenant. Finally, to summarize the key points, Revelation chapters 8 and 9 are the events in which six of the seven trumpets are sounded. The location of the incident is not an event that took place all over the world, but the event that takes place at the tabernacle of the seven golden lampstands that belong to the Gentiles after being expelled in Revelation 6 because of their betrayal. It was the sound of the trumpet to let them know they were being killed by the Gentiles a third at a time. But even when they heard the sound of the trumpet, they did not repent. In a word, it is a content of judging the chosen people who have betrayed. Our beloved pastors from all over the world and families of faith, this is a really difficult time in this world, a time of great tribulation. The greater the tribulation, the greater the difficulties, the more we should seek God and enter into the Word of God. Let us become one in God and one in the Word. Revelation 7 tells us that God will save countless people through the blood of Jesus in this great tribulation. The kingdom of freedom, peace, and love, heaven, is the true kingdom of God without sin and without law. This is the content of the promise God has made. Therefore, won't we who long for heaven and eternal life become one family in God and Jesus? Let's stop fighting each other, forgive each other, love each other, and communicate with each other. We are one in God and in Jesus. I hope you never forget that we are one. We will end by shouting, we are one, to signify this unity. We are one! Thank you for listening to the end. Let's pray together for a moment. Thank you very much, Father God. I thank you for letting us know today, too, the great love of Jesus on the cross and the prophecies and the truths of Revelation 
in the new covenant established by the blood of Jesus. I would like to express my gratitude for opening the Shincheonji Online Revelation Seminar through John, the new witness, who saw and heard the reality of the end times when the prophecies of Revelation were fulfilled. Grant to all who hear these words eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to understand, and grant us the grace of heaven and great wisdom and power. Then please work so that we can become the people of the kingdom of heaven who can understand the word and the word of reality and keep the new covenant revelation. In particular, I want you to remember each and every one of our pastors who have realized the precious word and to remember the members the pastor leads and to testify to the prophecies and fulfillment of the book of Revelation through the pastors so that all the members can realize the new covenant. Please work so that we can become the people of heaven who can protect the world. The Lord will lead all the remaining seminars. So please grant each one who listens to the faith that they can keep their hearts and minds. I believe in guiding all things and I pray it in the name of the loving Jesus. Amen. This angel is stepping on the sea and the land. What is this sea and the land? Why is the open scroll brought? There's an open scroll coming down from heaven. The person who received and ate that scroll received and ate the promise. So he is called a promised shepherd. Just like we eat physical food with our mouth, don't we eat spiritual food with our ears? Who are the peoples, nations, languages, and kings? Because people have been taught by men's teachings, shouldn't they be taught again by God's teaching? This Thursday, on the 11th, Zhang Bangshik, the Matthias tribe leader, will testify the words of Revelation chapter 10. The seminar will be held at 10 a.m., the same as today. I hope everyone who attends will understand the precious true will of God and the words of the promise. In addition to the words you heard today, if you have any questions about Shincheonji Church and its teachings, please call the tribe representative phone numbers on the screen. We will kindly answer in detail. This concludes our seminar for today. Let us close in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We will conclude the Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant. Thank you for being with us.